Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise you in the morning, praise you in the evening, praise you when I'm young and when I'm old. Praise you when I'm laughing, praise you when I'm grieving, praise you every season of the soul. If we could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, everything that, Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Praise you in the heavens, join it with the angels, praising you forever and a day. Praise you on the earth now, joining with creation, calling all the nations to your praise. If they could see how much you're worth, your power, your might, your endless love, then surely we would never cease to praise. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Let everything that, everything that, everything that has breath, praise the Lord.
make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you. His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Ah,
as we come together this evening on this first Sunday of August 2020, I just invite you to invite the Holy Spirit into your heart as we come together to worship. And as we're gathering for worship, we will be lighting our altar candles. And I invite you to sing Holy Ground because wherever you are, whatever you're doing right now in this very moment, you are here to worship God and you are on holy ground. And immediately following holy ground, our opening prayer this evening is being offered by Michael Sutherland. And then following the opening prayer, our opening song will be Lord, I Lift Your Name on High, performed by John from Resurrection Beach MCC. Thank you and God bless. Almighty God, our Creator, we come before you in praise and honor of your abundant blessings upon your people. Holy God, may we continue to honor what you do for this community of believers, for the larger community, and for everyone around the world. We pray that this nation will can go back to their understanding of how important the abundance we have is and how that abundance should be. a call to help those who are less fortunate, period. End of story. May we call ourselves as a community of believers, and as a nation, to return to the will of Jesus Christ who said, to help the least of those among us. We pray these things in Jesus' name. name on high Lord I love to sing your praises I'm so glad you're in my life 
I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way From the earth to the cross, my debt to pay From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky Lord, I lift your name on high You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, my debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Yes. We do come together to Lord, I lift your name on high. And so welcome to Resurrection Beach MCC on this Sunday evening, August 2nd, 2020. So if you're joining us from Facebook or on Zoom, I just want to invite you to say, hey, hi, hello, whatever uh, moves you so that our online greeters who are there can welcome you warmly and so that you can also interact with the other members who are joining us virtually for our worship services this evening. And those same online greeters are there to receive your prayer request. So if you have a prayer request and you know what it is before you get into the worship service, before we get into the message, um, I just want to invite you to go ahead and send that in now and that will give our online greeters time to gather all of the prayer requests together so that they can then get them to me on the church cell phone. And you also should have seen during the prelude service, if you were able to join us, that at the very bottom, we invite you to gather together something that represents for you the body and blood of Christ Jesus tonight. And if you haven't had a chance to do that already, I just want to invite you that during the, uh, the praise and worship time, when you can still hear the music, uh, to go to your kitchen or your pantry or uh, wherever you need to go to, to gather something that represents for you the body and blood of Christ Jesus tonight, and then bring it back and have it with you so that when we consecrate our elements here at the altar, yours will be consecrated as well. And you know, it does not have to be grape juice and a wafer. It can be whatever you have with you right then. Um, as I've shared before, you know, I've been at many retreats where we used high C and animal crackers. Or uh, one of our congregants actually used uh, a tea and a scone one night, or coffee and a pepper jack Cheez-Its. So whatever you have can be consecrated and blessed so that you too can participate in communion. So a huge thank you tonight to our musicians who are, are John and Meg and Chris from Resurrection Beach MCC and Robert from Good Samaritan MCC. So thank you guys so much for everything that you are doing to help make the worship service what it is today. And also a thank you to our scripture readers tonight, Carl from Resurrection Beach MCC and Eileen from Good Samaritan MCC. So that's our thank yous for tonight. And then I wanna talk about our upcoming events. So tomorrow night will be our Monday night virtual wellness group. It starts at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have any folks join for the last two weeks, so we'll give it one more try. If we don't have any attendance this coming Sunday, Monday night, then um, we'll probably go ahead and say that it's no longer needed. But so if you're interested in it and you can commit to wanting to go to it, please let me know by tomorrow morning so that I can let the facilitator know definitely that there will be folks who will be joining. And then coming up on Wednesday, August 12th, 
will be our second session, no, not our second, our third session of our Path to Discipleship. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask if we can bring up that uh, Path to Discipleship slide now so that you can see that our third session is going to be about God, our parent, our provider, and our comforter. And then coming up on Thursday, August 27th, will be our uh, virtual chat and laugh on Zoom. And then, but I almost forgot, so smack me, but this Saturday night, coming up on August 8th, will be our second Saturday of the month shenanigans on Zoom at 7 p.m. And so we just want to invite you to join there if you feel like you'd like to do a little socializing virtually and spend some time with folks, catching up, seeing faces, laughing, uh, whatever it might be. And then, of course, again, on August 27th, uh, we will have our Thursday evening chat and laugh. So we actually have something happening about every two weeks. So now back to the path to discipleship. Following the six sessions that we're gonna be having, we're also gonna be doing uh, some spiritual gifts assessments and then more in-depth topics about some of these six as we continue to move throughout uh, learning the Bible even more and are growing into discipleship as God calls us to be disciples of Christ. So that brings us to our local celebrations. And you know, uh, we had a lot of birthdays and anniversaries in July because there was a lot of anniversaries and a lot of fireworks. August is a little less, but you know what? It's still equally important, right? So our birthdays and anniversaries for uh, August and the first week in September because uh, there won't be a Sunday before these events happening. Uh, of course, yesterday, August 1st, David K. had a birthday. Coming up on August 10th, Jim D. from Good Sam has a birthday. On August 12th, Fernando has a birthday. August 22nd, Jody has a birthday. August 23rd, Kenny has a birthday. August 25th, Torrance has a birthday coming up. And then on September 4th, Jennifer and Crystal celebrate their anniversary. So as we uh, get ready, let's go ahead and uh, join together in singing happy birthday, happy anniversary, shall we? And so yes, as you saw during our announcements, we have a lot of things going on. We're doing a lot of celebrations, you know, and so now we have come to the time in our service for our offering. And so let me gather our tie-dye pig, because you know, our tie-dye pig here, he likes to be fed every week, as do we now, right? And so uh, there isn't any coins this week because of the coin shortage that's going on because of COVID-19. But we do have some green stuff that we're going to be feeding him with because, you know, he, he has a varied diet, right? And so um, some of the funds that we uh, distribute once the, the little piggy here gets full and goes wee, wee, wee all the way to the bank is, um, you know, some things like uh, senior meals, uh, homeless feedings. Um, we use this also for various things such as Christmas gifts and Christmas meals for uh, folks who are in need and various things like that. So if you'd like to make that donation, you can always, you know, just drop us a check in the mail or you can even uh, make a donation on our, our website and just mark it for the tie-dye pig and we'll make sure that that money gets in there. But you know, in addition to the tie-dye pig and the, uh, the coinage that we're currently feeding him with, we're also uh, receiving recyclables of water bottles and soda cans and then we have a, a, a team who does the recycling for us. And so that actually generates about $6,500 a year in income that we can use to help support our ministries. And so then um, let's go ahead and bring up the offering slide if we can so that we can just show the folks where we closed out the month of July at. And as you can see, our budget for July, like every other month, is was $6,030 and what we received in offerings was 3860 
which does give us a pretty good shortage of about uh, a little less than $2,200 that we're short. So um, if you can possibly make a donation tonight to help offset that shortage, we would be forever indebted to you. And so here to, well, before we go to that video, um, let me just say to you that if you'd like to make a donation, you can go to our website at rbmcc.org and about three quarters of the way down, you're gonna see a yellow donate button. You can click on that and you can use a debit card or a credit card and within a few seconds, uh, we receive an email telling us that uh, there's a donation there and so that we can receive it and transfer it into our bank account. Or if you write checks for some things like, I still write a couple of checks, not too many. Um, but you can make a check payable to Resurrection Beach MCC and send it to our address of 3303 Harbor Boulevard, Suite A as an Apple, 104, Costa Mesa, California, 92626-1536. And now here to tell you more about how your donation would support our ministries is Faith. We at Resurrection Beach, MCC, are a church alive and are welcoming and affirming to all God's people. However, we could not do this without your love, support, and charitable contributions. And so we are so blessed for each and every one of you for your time, your talent, and your financial contributions. But in order to accomplish God's mission in reaching hundreds of people, we do this through your love offering. And these funds oftentimes help to rest our loved ones through our benevolence fund, as well as provide services locally, globally, providing gifts for kids at Christmas for families who have been in domestic relationships, feeding the LGBT seniors and our homeless outreach ministries by providing food and shelter. So you may ask, how is I, as a body of believers, can make a difference? So if you are able to fulfill the needs of this ministry today, tomorrow, or in the near future, you can donate a check, you can donate on our website, or if you have a recycling and would like to donate it, we can make arrangements for possible pickup or drop off. In Matthew, we are reminded with Jacob, who was instructed by God to go home and to be with his family. And God told them, I will prosper you and your family, and I will sort you like the sands of the grains of sand. Will you please pray with me? Loving God, we thank you for your congregation. We thank you for your contributions. And we ask that you bless these gifts for your glory, that you may be of service, that we may be of service to others in a struggling world. Thank you. Thanks be to God. And so, yes, thank you again for every donation that you have made. And so now we've come to the time in our service for our praise and worship set. And so tonight we're gonna to start off our praise and worship with Above All by John from Resurrection Beach MCC, followed by I Give Thanks, which is a beautiful song by Meg and Chris. And then we'll be following that up with There's Just Something About That Name and Jesus Name Above All Names. And both of those are being performed by Robert from Good Samaritan MCC. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things, above all wisdom and all the ways of man. Before the world began, above all kingdoms, above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth, there's no way to measure what. Trampled 
trampled on the ground you took the fall and thought of me above all above all powers above all kings above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms above all thrones above all wonders the world has ever known above all wealth and treasures of the earth there's no way to measure what you're worth crucified lay beyond the storm you live to die Rejected and alone, like a rose, trampled on the ground, you took the fall and thought of me above all. Crucified, lay beyond the storm, you live to die. Rejected and alone like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall And thought of me Above all Like a rose Trampled on the ground You took the fall and thought of me above all You have shown me your favor
So yes, thank you all for that beautiful music set. And so now we come to the time for our scriptures and our scriptures for tonight, uh, our first one is Genesis 32, uh, 22 through 31, and that's being read by Carl. And then our second reading for this evening is Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21, and is being read by Eileen. Now these scriptures for tonight remind us of the blessings of God, the compassion of Christ Jesus, and how those blessings and that compassion is multiplied to us. Genesis 32, 22 to 31, journey toward Esau. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Matthew 14, verses 13 through 21, the miraculous feed. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. When the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When, when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and two fishes, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples took them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. And so before we begin this night, tonight's worship service, I just want to remind you, first of all, that if you know what your prayer request is and you haven't had a chance to submit it yet, please go ahead and get it submitted to our online greeters uh, during the, the message time so that they have time to gather all of them together and then get them into me on the church cell phone. And so let us go to God in prayer one more time, shall we? Holy God, we thank you so much for the abundant blessings and for the compassion of Christ Jesus that you have given to us. And we just pray, dear God, that this message would be uplifting and moving for those who are participating and listening. And so I pray, dear God, that the words of my mouth and the meditations of, my, of our hearts collectively would be pleasing unto you. So tonight's theme, as you may have seen during the prelude service, is God's abundant blessings. And on the service image slide, uh, if you noticed it on Facebook earlier in the week or as part of the prelude service tonight, you notice that there's two glasses there. One is overflowing and the other one is empty. Two views, if you will, on how we as humans view God's blessings. 
the events of this earthly life and how much compassion we show to others or receive from others. You know, I learned many years ago while going through my coming out that the valuable lesson of looking for and seeing the blessings instead of what I wasn't blessed with because God knew that those things that I was not blessed with were not blessings in the first place. You know, God has blessed me richly throughout my life, even when I, like Jacob in Genesis 32, 22 through 31, fought with God. And notice in verses 27 and 28 where God tells Jacob that his name is no longer Jacob, but is now Israel because he, like the Israelites, struggle with God. And you know, even today, we struggle with God when we don't get our own way, when we don't understand why God does something or allows something to happen, or when God doesn't let us win that mega millions or that Powerball lottery. Yes, God has blessed me richly with a very loving husband, a wonderful family of choice from coast to coast. And you know, the greatest blessing that I have received through this has been God's compassion by sending his, Christ, his son, Christ Jesus, as the ultimate sacrifice to take my sin. And now speaking of compassion, in the Matthew 14, 13 through 21 passage, which Eileen read earlier, while the focal point of the passage is usually how Jesus multiplied the five loaves of bread and the two fishes, what stuck out to me was verse 14 where it says, Jesus had compassion for them and healed those who were sick. God even now has compassion on us even when we disobey God, when we run the other way, or when we act like that terrible two-year-old and we just stomp our feet and hold our breath because we want what we want and God needs to give it to us. Well, it doesn't work that way, folks. And so I want to share with you some of my adventures through life and how God has blessed me and continues to bless me. My first partner, as a child, had been forced to attend church all the time because his dad was a church organist so as an adult he wanted absolutely nothing to do with church of any kind well by the time i met him i was actively attending the mcc church in rochester new york he had he lived there so well naturally i moved to be with him and closer to my church well, since he wasn't really church folk, he could barely spell church, actually, and wanted to relax on a Sunday night, to keep the peace, to spend more time with him, I slacked off on church and eventually stopped going altogether. And this went on for several months until one day he said to me, you need to go get some outside interest besides us in this house. I agreed. And so the next Sunday night I got dressed and as I was heading out the door to go to church, he asked me, where are you going? And I said, I'm going to church. And I walked out the door and jumped in my Ford Bronco and off I went. Well, let me tell you, when I got home, whew, the house began to twitch. That was not what he had in mind at all. But you know what, this time I stood my ground. I continued to attend every Sunday night. I joined the drama group that they were starting and in one of the plays, my character was actually an MCC pastor. <laughs> well, who knew what was to come, right? So a few months later, he took a job out of state. And we commuted for a time, but it just wasn't meant to last. I was devastated. My very first relationship, relationship, and poof, up in smoke. I felt empty and drained. 
just like that empty glass in the prelude image. But you know what? I wasn't empty because God had brought me back to my church before all of this happened. God had richly blessed me. I moved out of his house, left it vacant, got my own place, and I had my family of choice from my MCC church in Rochester, New York. And you know what? As my family of choice, they were there for me. They showed me the compassion of Christ. Compassion multiplied by the number of people there. They helped me to heal and to move on. And even now, some 30 plus years later, when I do go back to the Rochester, New York area to visit family, I go to Sunday worship. And just like every MCC that I have ever called home, I am truly welcomed with an open heart and open arms. You see, God blessed me just like he blessed Jacob, even though I left God for a time. And as you may recall from a, a message a few weeks ago, uh, this is not the first time. The first time I left was because of the homophobic messages coming out of the Baptist church of my youth. And I left until I found MCC, until God led me to MCC. Now fast forward a few years, and I'm actually the operations manager at a contractor building supply company in Rochester, New York. And you know, previous management had run up a, well, about a million dollar line of credit. And we, through careful purchasing and changing policies and procedures, were actually paying down that line of credit. Unfortunately, the bank that held the line of credit had reached out to every other bank in the city and told them, uh, I don't know what they told them, but they told them that they were not supposed to give us any, uh, any loans to pay off the line of credit because they were gonna force us into liquidation. Well, you know what? So they forced us out of business. But I still had faith in God and I knew that God would bring me through all of this. Well, you know, the liquidator that the bank hired wasn't there very much because he was off lining up future jobs. And so it, the, uh, the responsibility fell to my shoulders to do a lot of the wheeling and dealing and the uh, arrangements for bulk sales of items. Uh, we had a nail room that was just full of all different kinds of nails in bulk and that you could weigh out. Sold it all. Well, when he returned from one of those trips where he was gone, the vice president had a little come to Jesus with him. And she sat him down and she told him, now look, you haven't been here. And Dale has had to take care of this and this and this and this. You need to come up with some cash to give him. Now, I don't remember what it was that they gave me. It may have been 500 bucks, it may have been 1,000, I don't remember. But God blessed me with those extra funds. And that same vice president decided uh, she had been taking a stipend, you know, a few hundred dollars a paycheck a week or every two weeks, I don't remember. And so she told the, the payroll folks to uh, suspend her pay and add it to mine. And when I got my first check and it was not what I was expecting, I went to the payroll department. I said, what's this about? And they said, well, you're going to have to go talk to the vice president. So I did. And that's when I found out what was going on. And because of her compassion and her generosity, I was able to collect the maximum amount of unemployment, and this would have been in the early 1990s, so it certainly wasn't that much. Well, when word got out at uh, my MCC there in Rochester, New York, there was a lesbian couple at church who was very concerned, that, afraid that my partner and I would lose our house. So they offered us funds if we needed it to help pay the mortgage payment or to buy groceries or whatever we needed. Again, the compassion of God through others. Well, my partner uh, at the time is deaf. And as someone who is deaf, it is oftentimes very difficult to find a job. So he had gone to college to become a civil engineer. 
He had worked for several years as a civil engineer, but when he was not able to get a job because of his being deaf and he has a very limited place where a lot of companies will hire, or they did back then, he was eligible for Social Security. And so he had collected it once before, and then when he lost his job a couple of years before that, he had gone back to Social Security to uh, reactivate his claim. Well, you know, when you're dealing with the government, nothing happens overnight, right? So it took him almost those, those two years for the, the Social Security to kick back in. So just about that same time, we received notice that his claim had been approved, he was going to be paid retroactive back to when he lost his job two years earlier. And you know what? So between my increased unemployment and his Social Security that was going to start to come in, we were going to be bringing in just about the same amount of money as what I had been earning for the last two years when he wasn't working and not receiving any kind of benefits. And so God blessed us richly. Now, fast forward again. Norfolk, Virginia, the early 2000s. Um, on the East Coast, you know, we would prepare for dozens of hurricanes every year. And so this year was no exception. And so we prepared for Hurricane Isabella. And it hit the Outer Banks of North Carolina, I believe it was, and then it came up through. And by the time it got to our area, it had been downgraded to a tropical storm. Well, let me tell you, that tropical storm ripped up thousands of trees, damaged hundreds of homes. Um, as a matter of fact, the yard debris from downed trees, they had several sites throughout the city of Norfolk that were uh, piled to the level of the transformers on the electric poles. It was piled that high with debris that was going to be shredded, and then I think they were putting it on barges and going to take it out into the middle of the ocean and dump it, I think. I don't know. But, so that's what was going on. Well, the morning that this storm hit, I'm working from home because the call center is closed, and I'm on my laptop connected into a, a phone system in Ohio that I was supporting, and um, power went off. Well, luckily I had a UPS, so my, my internet connection stayed up. I didn't lose my, uh, you know, my modem or my router or any of that. And the laptop stayed up, so I was able to finish my work. And then recall a few, uh, maybe two weeks ago, when I talked about that little seven inch TV that I watched consenting adults on. Well, I still had it. Um, I've gotten rid of it since then, but I still had it then. And so it used eight d size batteries. So luckily we had a case of batteries set in there. And so we hooked it up, because uh, we didn't lose cable. We still had cable, I think. Or maybe we used a little antenna, I don't remember now. But, so we could watch the local news. And so uh, we were sitting there watching the news as uh, debris is flying by the windows and I, I looked out uh, the office window and I could see this beautiful 15 or 20 foot tall tricolored butterfly bush that I had planted at the corner of the house ripped out of the ground and tossed away. Well, about that same time, uh, a big limb from one of my cedar trees came crashing down and part of it landed on my neighbor's uh, GMC Jimmy. Luckily, it put just a tiny little dent in the hood. And so after all that was over with, I was sitting back down watching TV, and all of a sudden I heard this loud boom, and the whole house shook. And I thought, oh no, the roof is gone, or something like that. Well, I ran to the kitchen door, and I ran outside, and my driveway was full of a downed tree. Now this tree was not mine, it was my neighbor's tree. And in the backyard we had a 26 foot above ground swimming pool. And 
the corner of the house. Well, I was richly blessed because that tree came down and it arched over the top of the swimming pool. And there was a Y in that tree. One branch went to this side of the house and the other branch went to this side of the house and went right down the driveway. The only damage that it did was it pulled the corner of the gutter out from the house about two inches. That was going to be easy enough to fix. Well, my neighbor heard the, the crash and the boom, and he and his wife came running out of the house uh, to make sure that we were OK. And uh, so then I remember he and I spent several days cutting up that tree that was almost as big around as, yeah, bigger around, eh, about Three quarters is as big around as what the, the altar is long. So it was a good three and a half feet across. And um, so we spent several days cutting that tree down and then helping him put up a new fence because his fence got totally destroyed and all kinds of other things. And you know what? When I went back to work, uh, once we finally got power back, oh yeah, and so that reminds me. So we lost power for seven days. We had just spent several hundred dollars filling up the freezer with food. Well, that basically thawed and was of no use. But you know what did happen is a local ice company had coolers packed full of ice that they weren't able to deliver anywhere because none of the stores were open because none of them had power. So they made an announcement somehow and my next door neighbors went to that ice place and brought us back 40 pounds of ice that we could put in a cooler to keep some of our food cool. So, richly blessed. So when I went back to work, you know, people asked me, you know, some of my coworkers, the people that were in my same department who were scattered throughout the United States supporting some of the various call centers there. And a couple of days later, I get an envelope at work, intercompany, with a check for almost a thousand dollars in it. My co-workers had taken up a collection and sent me that money to help pay for any damages or cleanup that needed to happen. So with those funds I was able to have that damaged cedar tree taken down and I was also able to have a couple of uh, other pine trees in my backyard taken down before they could damage anything else. And so, you know, I was richly blessed again, and I was shown compassion by my coworkers. And so I was also blessed because I was able to take the, I think it was the month of November, I think I worked Monday, Wednesday, and Friday mornings. And I spent the rest of the time cutting up and hauling to the one of the sites, one of the drop-off sites, all of that yard debris from what fell on my property from my neighbor and my two pine trees and a cedar tree and I just hauled all of that stuff away. So I was richly, richly blessed and I received so much compassion from others. Now in 2010 the company I worked for was bought out and there was this massive reorg. I had three or four different bosses within a six week period. Talk about confusion. I didn't even know who to report to anymore. The call center that I was based at in Virginia Beach, Virginia was scheduled to be closed. And they, they had an all employee meeting and we went to it and they were all given instructions by their bosses. We didn't even know who our boss was that day. So we got a phone call from somebody who gave us some information. So a couple of months later, I got a phone call from my fourth boss the day before my birthday. And she started off the call by saying, I, I, I've never had to do this before. And I thought, oh, great. Here I am in my 50s, and I'm going to be out of a job. And so she said, well, I have three options for you. You can take a severance package, and because of your years of service, you can get 48 weeks of severance pay. Or you can relocate to uh, one of our data centers in Ohio, or you can relocate to a data center in Southern California. 
And I said, well, let me think about it over the weekend, because this was a Friday, and let me pray about it, and I will give you a call on Monday. Okay, that's fair. Monday rolled around, so I called her, and I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm over the age of 50. I think finding a, uh, a job in the area here is going to be difficult. Um, and I spent 37 years living in snow in the wintertime. I have zero desire to go to Ohio. So this place in Southern California, what's the name of it? So she told me. And I said, well, you know, I've never been to California. I have no idea if I would even like it there. So I would like to be able to come out there for a weekend and take a quick look around and make my decision. And then I will let you know as soon as I get back. Okay, okay. So we made those arrangements, and um, the company was gracious in that they offered a relocation package, and they also offered to pay the income tax on that relocation package. God's compassion was multiplied to me yet again. And then I moved, and the standard relocation was three days. What are you supposed to do in three days? But my boss granted me extra time to come from the East Coast to the West Coast. And again, God showed me compassion. And you know, in 2018, the company had already started over the past couple of years of eliminating various positions about every six months. Well, I could see the handwriting on the wall. I was over 60. I had almost 24 years of service. So my eight wages were higher. And I was not surprised when I got that phone call telling me that my position had been eliminated. You know what? God had compassion on me even then because that severance package was enough to get me to early retirement. And in the process, uh, one of the companies that I had worked for at one point had eliminated our pension fund and had rolled it into our 401ks. So as far as I knew, I had zero pension fund. Well, it turns out that when my company had been bought out in 2009, um, because I was over the age of 50, there was a requirement in the purchase contract that any employee over the age of 50, I guess it was, had to be set up with a pension fund. I had a pension fund. Who knew? I mean, it's not huge. You know, it's, it's a, a few hundred bucks a month, but hey, that certainly helps because you know what social security doesn't cover it all that's for sure folks but you know what i was richly blessed and my glass of blessings does overflow and you know back in 2016 i met fernando and so in january of 2018 we submitted paperwork to the u.s government for fernando to come here well as you know dealing with the government is always a struggle Finally, in November of 2018, we were notified of an interview to be held in January of 2019. Well, because we hadn't supposedly submitted sufficient supporting documentation, the embassy yanked the tourist visa and denied the application. We were devastated. God's compassion was multiplied to us again through your prayers your letters of support, and the other 500 pages of documentation we had to submit. Fernando arrived in the U.S. on May 1st. We were married on June 1st. And God's compassion has been multiplied to us many times over through everything that you all did for the wedding, for the other times throughout the years. Yes, indeed, I am richly blessed, and God has blessed me abundantly. And you know, this past week, Last weekend, I guess it was, uh, we were having breakfast, and the refrigerator sounded like it was making a funny noise. Well, you know, I opened the refrigerator door, and there was, you know, a couple of glass jars were bumping up against each other and against the outside wall, and I thought, okay, well, I'll just move those. Well, and the sound stopped. So, ah, okay, I solved that problem. Well, then, Sunday night, I think it was? I think so. Uh, after we were home from service and we were talking about what to have for lunch the next day, 
So I was going to go get something out of the freezer. Well, I opened the freezer door, and a, yeah, a little bit of the food was thawed. And I was like, oh, God. Well, and my first thought was, you know what? We have a couple of freezers here at church that have room in them. Let's take everything out of the freezer, bag it up, and take it to church and put it in the freezers there. So we did that. And we have been richly blessed because of it. Now, I could have just stood there and gone, woe is me, and oh my God, what are we going to do? And how could this be happening? But instead, I just immediately went to a temporary solution. God blessed us to have a couple of refrigerators and freezers here at church so that our food could go in there. And you know, I'm thinking also of other blessings that you may not recognize as a blessing. You know, a few months ago, Sharon suffered a stroke. And she has made great progress and recovery. And here's the blessing in all of that. They were scheduled to leave to go to uh, a new home in Illinois in early March. Well, because of COVID-19, they delayed it because they weren't sure if the rest stops and things like that were going to be open. So they delayed it. Sharon had her stroke. And the blessing here is that their insurance, their health insurance, is good in California and nowhere else. So the blessing in that situation is that they were still here. God kept them here so that they would have the health coverage and insurance that they needed through Sharon's recovery. So God is an awesome God, and God richly and abundantly blesses us when we look for and see the blessings. And so as I say, yes, God has filled my cup to overflowing. I stand here before you having lost two careers in my lifetime, but I've gained a calling. I've gained a large family of choice across three states, a wonderful, caring, and loving husband, and more compassion than any one person ever deserved. God has blessed me abundantly, just as he has you if you but look for the blessing instead of the empty glass. So I want to encourage you this week to look back over your life. See where there have been issues. And I know, sure as God is my witness, that if you open your eyes, your heart, and your mind, you will see in your life where God's abundant blessings have overflowed. And you will also see the compassion of Christ through those around you. And once you've done that, then get ready to share it with others. Because each and every one of you are called to be the hands, the feet, the face, and the voice of Jesus Christ to those in need. And by sharing your life's experiences, the blessings of God and the compassion of Christ, you have the power to change people's hearts and their lives. And here a little bit later in the service, uh, when we come to the time for our benediction, you're going to hear about another family who was blessed to overflowing because of God. God bless you all. And amen. Yes, and so first of all, before we go into our family prayer time, a few seconds ago, you would have heard a very loud noise outside. Well, unfortunately, that was a diesel delivery truck backing up next to the FedEx building to pick up some uh, product. So our apologies for that. Um, so this brings us to our prayer requests. And so these are the ones that I know about from throughout the week that we've received. Uh, the first one is continued prayers for John G's grandfather, who continues to have uh, infection issues and health issues. 
Uh, continued prayers for Laura C to remain free of her migraines, to be able to control her blood pressure and some of the other stresses that she's facing. Uh, praises that Teresa B's vertigo seems to have, if it hasn't totally gone, it's pretty much gone and she is much better than she was. Uh, continued prayers for Carl's friend who is experiencing some paranoia. Uh, also continued prayers of healing for Laura W uh, who had surgery a couple of weeks ago now and is at home. Uh, praises and a huge thank you from Laura to both Janet and Matt who made the journey from Carson to her home down in Santa Ana to handle some yard cleanup including some yard cleanup from her 80 pound dog, Mabel, and for taking Mabel for a much needed walk. Uh, continued prayers for Jennifer and Christopher, Crystal, <laughs> as they seek reliable uh, vehicle to replace the one that was totaled in an accident. Prayers for travel mercies for Janet and Sharon as they head from Oregon in the morning to Illinois and continued prayers for Carl, who's recovering from a very nasty pulled muscle in his calf, which happened yesterday. Uh, continued prayers of healing for Kelly, who's working through some sinus issues. And I know uh, prayers also for Robert, who last week was experiencing some issues with, uh, with a bloody nose problem that he has. So now let me check the church phone. Oh, crash, bang, boom. Huh? So let's see here, what do we have? Uh, yes, continued prayers for Kevin and his pain and sleep issues. Um, I did find out this afternoon that uh, he's now able to blink and to move an eyebrow. So some of his Bell's palsy is starting to improve. So praise God for that and thank you. Uh, yes, prayers for Sharon's healing and for their travel back to Illinois. Uh, prayers for Jesus's flight back from Grand Junction on Monday morning. Uh, all of our BMCC family and friends to stay safe and healthy. And for John G's mental health and stress. And let's see, what else do we have? Do we have... Hmm. Okay. Well, that looks like that might be all of them. And so wherever you are, if you're watching us right now on a laptop or a, an iPad or something or a phone, I just want to invite you to either reach out your hand or to just put your hand over the top of your phone as we go to God in prayer. Holy God, we just lift up to you right now each one of these prayer requests and these praises, holy God. And we lift up also the people who have brought these prayer requests to us. We just pray that your anointing touch would fall on each person and that you would be there, holy God, to lift up, to support, and to care for each person. And we lift up especially those who have silent prayer requests, holy God, because you know what they need before we even do. And in these things we pray, holy God, Amen. And so in conclusion of our family prayer, we've come to the time in our service when we are invited to come together for communion. So as we gather for communion, I just want to invite you to join together uh, with whoever is there with you uh, to sing Santo, Santo, Santo. And so as we prepare to gather together for communion, I just want to invite you to join in singing Santo, Santo, Santo.
So we've come to the time in our service when we are invited to come to Christ's table, to be at table with Jesus Christ. And so as we prepare to come to Christ's table, I just want to encourage you to set aside some time this week to look back over your life, to find those moments when you felt that the world was against you. Then dig in deep and find the blessings of God, the compassion of Jesus Christ, and own it, claim it. Forget about the empty glass. Instead, focus on the overflowing glass of blessings that you have received, and get ready to share them with others. You know, as Christians, we are called by God to share our journeys, our storms, our blessings, and the compassion of Jesus Christ with others as a way to lead them, to give hope, just as we are called to share this table with others. At Resurrection Beach MCC, as at every MCC throughout the world, this is an open table because it is Christ's table. There are no exclusions, no requirements of classes, membership, or any other man-made limitations. It is simply our honor to be able to share this with you. And so, when Jesus met in the upper room with his disciples and his family of choice, they gathered for a meal. And during that meal, Jesus was sharing with them and reminding them of the miracles not only that they had witnessed, but that they had participated in. And he continued to speak to them to remind them of the power and the glory of God in heaven. And when the meal had completed, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a piece of unleavened bread. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he broke it. And he said, this bread represents my body, which will be broken for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you eat of this bread, remember me. Remember the miracles that you have participated in and witnessed. Remember the things that I have taught you. And he passed it among them. And when they had consumed it, in like manner, he reached into the center of the table and he picked up a cup of wine. Some say the cup of Elijah, others the cup of peace, the cup of joy, the cup of promise. It was a cup that was put out in anticipation of the coming Messiah. He raised it toward heaven, he blessed it, he gave thanks for it, and he breathed into it with the very same breath that God had breathed into Adam. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which will be shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Remember the things that I have taught you. And remember that I give you a new commandment to love one another as I first loved you. At Resurrection Beach MCC, as part of our communion consecration, we recite the Lord's Prayer in unison. And so I just invite you right now, wherever you are, to join with me in reciting the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever 
and ever. Amen. Our faith in God is our parent. Jesus as our Savior and the Holy Spirit as our supporter gives us victory over eternal death. And as we receive these elements, let it remind us that God has given us the gift of faith over fear. The gift of living with and because of the Holy Spirit of the living God. Because God is indeed not only a God of wonders, but a God of abundant blessings. And so, Holy God, we ask you for your blessings and your anointing on these elements and the elements of each person participating virtually, making them for us representative of the body and the blood of Christ Jesus. So, Holy God, we just lift up to you right now these elements and we pray that you would make them for us the body and the blood of Christ Jesus and that as we receive them that we are renewed again and again in your Holy Spirit in these things we pray Amen and so I want to invite each one of you now to take what you have present raise it toward heaven, to bless it, to give thanks for it, and to consume it. So I just invite you now to raise your hands toward heaven as we go to God in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, the one who died on the cross and rose from the grave that we might have eternal life in heaven with you. We pray, Holy God, in the name of you as the Father, Jesus Christ as your Son and our brother and the Holy Spirit, our supporter, through receiving today these elements representative of the body and the blood of Jesus to strengthen us, support us, and lead us to those who you would have us to share your love and the light of Jesus Christ with as our Redeemer. For yes, our Redeemer lives in each of us today, supported by the Holy Spirit. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. And so, as we prepare to close our worship service this evening, um, we will be singing, um, you may have heard it during the prelude, and we're going to be singing it again as our closing song, The Blessing by Meg and Chris. And then our benediction video will be by John from Resurrection Beach MCC. And our closing song, our outro song, I should say, for this evening is Open the Eyes of My Heart, Lord. But before we do that, I just want to take a moment for us to bless the food that we are going to receive throughout this coming week. And so, Holy God, we just lift up to you right now each and every person who is going to have anything to do with any of the food that we are going to receive this week. I pray especially, Holy God, for your anointing touch on the farm workers who are performing hours and hours of back-breaking work to harvest the food that we are going to be receiving. 
prayers of anointing for the truck drivers and the equipment operators and the processing plant workers and the store workers for those who are exposed to uh, the people of this world that they would remain safe from COVID-19. And so I just pray, dear God, that you would also bless each morsel of food that we are about to receive, that it would be strengthening to our bodies, that we would be able to do exactly what you are calling us to do, Holy God, to be God's love and the light of Jesus Christ to those in need. Amen. And so now, please join together in singing the blessing and then we'll have our benediction by John and our closing, our outro song of Open the Eyes of My Heart. God bless you and amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace.
everyone, it's John again. As we talked about God's abundant blessings, I'm reminded of the story of my brother who lost his job due to illness. And shortly thereafter, his wife ended up being legally blind and losing her job. This was about 10 years ago. When that happened, they didn't just lose their jobs, they lost their house. And what they were forced to do was to take what money they had in the bank, plus some that they were able to get out of the 401k, and they bought an RV, a 14-foot RV. And for probably the next seven years, they lived in that RV. And all the time they told me, they said, John, we prayed. We prayed that things would turn around for us, that somehow we would get to be homeowners again, maybe even just an apartment. They weren't greedy. They just wanted to be something other than an RV. One day, my brother was out walking in the morning. He took a path down this, this RV park that he hadn't taken before. And he ended up running into somebody, and it was in this like mobile home park. And the person he ran into happened to be the son of a woman who had died. And they were there, the family was there, cleaning out the mobile home of all the furniture so that they could sell it. They wanted $14,000 for the mobile home. My brother had maybe $3,000 in his bank account. And so he said, please, 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 let, let me run to the bank. Let me, let me talk to them. We, we need a home. This is a great, this is a great opportunity for us. And he was, he was all excited because he thought that finally God had landed him a home. And he went to the bank and the bank said, no. And so my brother came back after having gotten his wife excited and everything and went back to the family and apologized and said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Even with the 3,000 I have in the bank and if we sold the RV, we might get 4,000, 4,500, but we're never going to be close to the 14,000 that you're asking for this home. Long story short, that family ended up selling my brother and his wife that mobile home for $7,000. And not only did they sell the home, but they took all the furniture that they had packed up and they put it back into the home. So my brother got the bed, he got the, uh, the shelving, he got the dressers, he got the TV in the living room, the chairs, the couches, all of the utensils in the kitchen and all of the kitchen appliances. So, you know, God works in mysterious ways, but he always makes good on his promise to his children. Honor God, and he will honor you with blessings abundantly. God bless you all. And thank you again for joining us this Sunday. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. 
Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. High and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. You are holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. 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 I want to see you.